Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, Coffee Convos. I feel like it's been a hot minute um, since we've had a Coffee Convos session. So welcome back to our Saturday morning uh, roundtable discussions. And uh, today uh, is going to be a fantastic session, uh, diving in and learning all about a fantastic new resource for the teaching of French lyric diction. So um, not, a, not a specific topic at all, but uh, we hope that we, we, we uh, hope that you uh, will take note and research this resource further and we'll get right to uh, learning about it after a few housekeeping notes. But from uh, CSI, um, I just wanna remind everybody that our Winter Song Festival is available for streaming um, our Winter Song Festival Spotlight concert with uh, Elena Villalon is still available for streaming through the end of this month uh, with a single pass. If you happen to sign up for a CSI Digital All Access Pass, you will, of course, be able to watch that concert and all of our other concerts um, from the past in our archives as much uh, as you like. So uh, please take note of that and do catch it. It is an incredible uh a program. Elena is, of course, a CSI favorite and our old associate artistic director, and she sounds absolutely incredible. So uh, please do um, check that out while you still can. Also, we have a brand new podcast called Song Cycle, spearheaded by our current associate artistic director, Laura Lavoir, and it has dropped on all platforms now. So please go check it out and subscribe and leave a great review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Laura, uh, basically every other Monday, will be sitting down with quite a diverse uh, range of, of personalities directly or indirectly related with uh, the art song world. Um, for example, our, 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 the second guest that will be coming out a week from this Monday is David Paul. He's a director. Um, and so just all sorts of uh, personalities and professions. She'll um, talk with administrators, performers, coaches, pianists, singers, you name it. Um, so please check that out on um, any platform, wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, we hope that you enjoy that. It's called Song Cycle. So now, um, without any further ado, I would like to first introduce our guests shortly, and then we'll bring them into the stream. So we are welcoming uh, today the co-founders of the Diction Police. And I will start with Ellen Rissinger, who many of you might uh, recognize from many of CSI's activities this season so far. I think she's an MVP of CSI. Uh, Ellen Rissinger is an American vocal coach and accompanist, most recently on the music staff of the Zexische Staatsoper in Dresden, Germany. She started her career in the United States working with companies such as the Opera Company of Philadelphia, Pittsburgh Opera, Kentucky Opera, Glimmerglass Opera, Baltimore Opera, Knoxville Opera, and Opera Theater of Pittsburgh. Recently moved back to the United States from Germany, she has since given master classes at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln at uh, Eastern Michigan University, as well as recitals with Dr. Kevin Hanna, uh, Hanrahan and has opened a private coaching studio in Philadelphia, New York. Uh, and I should add that she is also currently on the faculty of Carnegie Mellon University, her alma mater. So we will welcome Ellen Rissinger in just a moment. Her cohort and co-founder of the Diction Police is pianist and vocal coach Francois Germain, who has performed extensively in Europe, the United States, and Canada as soloist and accompanist. A native French and German speaker, Germain specializes in uh, French melody, lead, and art song. Since 2017, he has been on the music staff uh, at the Zempa Opa in Dresden, Germany as well as a guest vocal and language coach for new French productions. For the past 10 years, Germain has also been on the faculty of the University of Miami Frost School of Music summer program in Salzburg, Austria, which is one of uh, Europe's longest running and most respected program of its kind for singers and vocal pianists. So as you can see, two very accomplished pianist coaches who are both the co-founders of the Diction Police. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Great to be here. Good morning to everybody. Um, so I should say before we dive right in, folks watching at home, if you have any questions at all during the course of this live stream, feel free to pop them in the comments on Facebook or YouTube. And um, we, if possible, we will answer them on air. Otherwise, I just want to turn it over to you both to, I mean, can you, can you start a little bit telling us about the Diction Police and how it came to be um, as a as an entity, its origin story, if you will, um, before we sort of dive right into this new French diction resource, Chanty. 
the uh, the original origin. It was a podcast. It started out in 2010 in April, and partly it started out because I had a few people start asking me about diction resources for their for their classes, and they were trying to figure out which books they should use to teach from. And I kept, I'd been studying diction for a long time and looking into all the resources, but for me, I. I didn't like the way people were explaining it because it didn't sound the way I expected it to because my American ears would take what they were saying about, oh, you do this, you do this, you do this. And then I would say it in an American way. Ah. So I wanted to really bring people the sound and make it really specific to opera because there is a huge difference in almost every language between how we speak and how we sing. Mm -hmm. So it started as a podcast of me talking about diction rules with opera singers, with coaches, with conductors, with anybody in the opera world, and also talking about specific topics like, is Larghetto slower than Andantino? And, you know, trying to bring a few things into the foreground. And through that, when, when we, I actually worked at the, the Salzburg program too, from Univers uh, University of Miami with Francois. And because of that, I asked him to be a guest on the podcast. And do you want to take it from here? I, I will. And um, so I will say that the podcast was incredibly popular uh, very quickly. Uh, and um, Ellen had asked me to come as a guest a few times. And we, we talked about uh, topics of French diction because that's uh, really my area, my strongest area of expertise as far as diction and language. Um, and... I think after have, we did two or three maybe together on the podcast. And then at that point, um, Ellen had wanted to expand the podcast into something that was more comprehensive, uh, a more global resource for addiction and asked me if I was interested uh, in participating and sort of coming up with that new format. Uh, and I think that was in 2014, Ellen, if I I'm think so, yeah. So we, um, we sort of figured out that we wanted to keep the uh, the basic philosophy of hearing the sounds of the language uh, delivered by native speakers, but also add all the other tools that are needed for lyric diction, uh, IPA transcriptions, translations, uh, the, the readings, uh, and all sorts of sort of uh, more pointed tutorials. And um, we started the website in 2014 and it's been slowly and surely growing ever since. And we've always kept an eye on um, trying to develop new resources and new content. And what what else can we do? Uh, right. What can we offer that that really will be helpful for um, people who have little experience with diction, but also people who are already uh, you know, professional singers that want to review, brush up, uh, and and uh, go a little bit further. Great. And we yeah. wanted to make it fun. I mean, the one the one summer. The, the series that we did was a series of tongue twisters for singers. <laughs> so we took some really crazy tongue twisters in every language. We had we even had one in English, which was not easy. Um, but we had five or six of them in French, German, Italian, and Russian. And we talked about them in, in a way of like, not just how to pronounce them for your daily life, but what are the diction rules that would have gone along with this? Right. And as we were doing all, all this work and expanding our catalog and our offerings, uh, we also, um, you know, we were trying to get the website to be known and uh, for people to use it. So we started going to uh, various uh, conferences. And um, I remember the first time I went to the uh, Classical Singer Conference as the Diction Police, uh, there was a lot of interest for everything that we were doing. And one of the questions that came back a lot was from voice teachers who had to teach diction courses and whether we had some kind of uh, either course or program or something that they could use in the classroom. And this was probably already five or six years ago and it sort of planted this bug in our heads that we should develop something that was mm -hmm. um, a full, I would say, uh, resource for somebody to either teach diction or teach it to themselves. Um, so that was always in the back of our minds and uh, when um, when the pandemics uh, when the pandemic hit uh, back in March, uh, and sort of very logically suggested, well, we we're going to have some time now. Maybe this is the time to really sit down and and do this uh, this class or handbook or we didn't quite know what it was yet, but we uh, 
we figured maybe we should put our heads together and, and really dive into this. So that's sort of the more direct origin of the handbook that we're going to talk about today. So the its form and its concept wasn't really even solidified until the pandemic hit. Not entirely. I mean, we knew there were certain things we knew. We, we he knew from from teaching all these years and from talking with a lot of teachers that what they really like are having word lists that students can repeat as well as as learn, so that they they can use it as tools to learn the diction. Um, right. And and that's something I wouldn't have known because until actually until this spring, I've never actually taught an actual diction class. Right. But this spring, I will be teaching my first actual diction class in Russian diction. Nothing like jumping in at the weekend. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and I had been teaching uh, French diction for many years, and and I had been talking to my colleagues about other classes and what they need, and I, I sort of knew what was missing in the landscape uh, of resources. Um, and the thing that both Ellen and I knew is that we we were very familiar with all the um, the traditional textbooks that are out there, some of which are great, uh, and we both use all the time, and uh, I have them all. Um, but it was very obvious that there was something missing in terms of uh, the potential with multimedia content uh, and more interactive platforms. Uh, th there was nothing that we knew of yet uh, that would sort of uh, exploit all the possibilities that we have with modern technology. So it was sort of, um, you know, trying to combine everything that I, ha I had heard from colleagues and that Ellen had heard from colleagues that they would use in a classroom, but also what we felt could be added to a traditional textbook format. And as we started working on it, we figured out, well, we could do this, we could do that, we could add videos, we could add uh, audio, um, and this tied in really well with our um, overall philosophy at Diction Place of hearing things rather than just reading about them. So that's sort of where it started back in April, um, and then we worked on it through the summer and uh, came up with something that I think uh, works really well. Uh, we've had it tested by uh, a few colleagues of ours uh, during their fall classes. They gave us some great feedback, and uh, now we have uh, launched uh, the vessel into the word the world. So, <laughs> hey, shall we introduce the people to the vessel? Please. Yes, why not? All right. Introducing Chanté, the Diction Police's new interactive handbook of French diction for singers, available now on the Diction Police website. Let's take a look inside. A handbook for the classroom or self-study. Divided into 14 modules and two appendices. Each module presents rules and principles. Extensive examples are read by a native speaking diction coach. Apparemment, ardemment, Toi que j'aime ardemment. Each module ends with a review section with review exercises. Diction Police videos. And additional lessons with listening suggestions. The first appendix lists the most common spellings in French. The second appendix contains a thousand proper nouns and their pronunciation. Homework, quizzes, and tests are available upon request. For more information or to purchase the handbook, go to www.dictionpolice.com. Perfect. <laughs> it looks fabulous. And of course, you know, of course we need this interactive uh, aspect to something like Lyric Diction. Right. One of the, one of the comments that we were the most proud of is that the, one of the teachers that used it in her class said not only 
does it help you learn the rules because it's got a more interactive focus, but they also had the sounds in their ears so much better that, they, that the students were actually speaking French with more of a French flair because they were listening to a French person speak the words. What a concept. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, great, are we ready to take a dive in? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if my screen is sharing yet. Yeah. Is it? Okay. So um, this is actually the, um, the website. Uh, if, you, if you go to addictionpolice.com, this is the, our landing page. And I just wanted to show that uh, briefly. Um, so we have the sort of the traditional offerings with, you know, IPA um, and transcriptions and uh, translations and all sorts of ways to search through the catalog. Um, and then we also have all these um, extras. So all the podcast episodes that Ellen uh, was uh, running for all these years are all available on the website as well. And then we have uh, hundreds of little tutorials that are um, in various different formats. Some of them are videos, some of them are recordings with little lessons that uh, are attached to them. Uh, and we cover many, many languages, not just the main four. Uh, but I guess the, the meat of what we're doing today is our handbook. So if, if you go to the website, this these are the buttons where you will uh, be able to uh, purchase it and download it. So it's all pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I'm going to show you what it does. So once you've purchased and downloaded the book, it um, it becomes a download and uh, a desktop app. So I have it here on my desktop as this little icon. And um, it just opens like a, one of your regular uh, apps. We're currently in the process of having it also available on the, um, the app stores, so on the Google Play and um, the Apple Store. Fancy. Um, this is a, a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be, so it's, it's taking us a little bit longer <laughs> to actually <laughs> figure that out. Um, but, you know, there was, um, we, we wanted to get something out uh, during the pandemic, and uh, the desktop apps work just as well. It's just that we're not yet available to have them on right. our phones and our uh, iPads. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Sometimes when I run multiple things, they don't all. Too many screens. Too many screens. OK. Oh my gosh. What's it doing? That, that's actually never happened before. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you know? Everybody can, uh, everybody can just go on their own home computers and uh, follow along. <laughs> That's right. Okay. There we go. So the book opens um, on the last page that you were on normally. So this is probably why it's here. But I'm just going to, and Alan, uh, feel free to jump in, uh, tell me what to do at any point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in charge of the buttons here. Um, <laughs> I mean, I so, think the, the great thing is to see the, the modules for a second. So you can sort of see how we broke it down into classroom, like per week kind of thoughts or per, per study section. So you can see we spent quite a bit of time on vowels, especially for French. We spent a lot of time on the spellings of the vowels, but that way you have a really solid basis in all of the crazy spellings in French. So the, the book is, is sort of divided into something that can be used over the course of the semester um, with, with this idea that th this might be a, a tool for addiction class. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't also use it if you're not in addiction class. I think it's, um, it's a book that, that you can really use if you're on your own because of all the audio content. Uh, you don't really need a teacher if you don't have one. If you're not enrolled in college and you still want to uh, learn about French diction, uh, the book will still work. But the, the basic outline is, is based over a semester-long semester -long course. So each module um, is about a week. Um, and um, that's been working really well. This is sort of how I've divided my classes up to this point, so I know that the amount of content actually is uh, manageable. Uh, in, in this navigation bar, you can then jump to uh, all the different topics within each module, and I will show you this in a second. Um, at the beginning of the book, we felt it was important to sort of 
review the, the sounds of the language and have um, sort of a go-to chapter where you can just go and, and look at all the APA symbols in French, uh, their equivalents in English, and uh, we have readings for uh, all of our uh, examples and everything that's uh, in the book. So. I don't think you shared your sound. Ah. <laughs> that's I okay. Didn't, I did not know there was an option. But in, uh, this is essentially uh, me reading the French and Ellen reading the English. So you can right. just <laughs> picture that in your mind. <laughs> you, I, I meant to say this before. You both have very good audio-only podcast voices in the clips that I've heard. Oh, very well, great. <laughs> I feel like Ellen should have uh, been a, a radio presenter if she had yes. become yes. a coach. Um, <laughs> so this is sort of our introductory chapter. And then when we go into each module, each module is built um, the same way. We have a little bit of an introduction. And then we dive right into the sounds. Uh, so again, uh, with audio uh, clips. And then we have... Uh, sort of a little bit of an explanation on how to physically form the sound uh, and what articulators are involved wow. and what we do with them. And then we go into the, the spelling rules. So this is a sort of a comprehensive uh, review of, uh, you know, every time you would have a bright A ah in French, um, which is for French particularly very complicated. And uh, we spent a lot of time trying to make it uh, sort of user-friendly and uh, digestible. Mm -hmm. um, we then go on to uh, special cases, uh, of which there are many um, special cases and examples. And you can see, if you see where it says C module two, whenever something is more fleshed out somewhere else, we did try to connect it to that. So if you click on that, it will go to that if that's the topic you're looking for. It will yeah. go to that position. Um, I am going to interrupt here just because this is a question based on something that just happened. We do have a question. Steven is, says, in the main graphic for the book, it looked like there's a white, you know, symbol behind the schwa. Is there a reason for that? What is it representing? <laughs> yes, the original logo, the, the logo of the Diction Police is the prohibition sign over a schwa. Um, and <laughs> not to say that the schwa is not the most useful vowel on the face of the earth because, let's face it, the schwa is a great vowel. The reason that it has a prohibition sign over it is that the schwa is not created equal, as proven by the fact that we have an entire chapter devoted to the schwa in this book. There you go. And I think also in my mind, it always reminds me that it's not stressed. So mm. it's you're forbidden to stress the schwa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so after all this, you know, list of rules and explanations and uh, uh, we go into our examples. Uh, and this is the part that um, from talking to teachers, I felt was uh, maybe the most important in the book. Uh, so we, we, uh, we created all these lists of first individual words that uh, feature the sound that we're talking about. So in this case, it's the bright eye and you can see them all here uh, highlighted in red. Um, and uh, again, they're all red uh, slowly so you can you can hear them, uh, you can you know, pause the player and repeat them. Um, the way I would use this in a classroom is I would probably assign um, a module uh, a week ahead to my class so that they can actually go through the words on their own. And then in the class, we would uh, read them together. So they have the benefit of um, practicing at home with the recordings and then in the classroom, then I can uh, hear what they do and how they sound saying those words. Um, we also felt it was very important to include examples from the repertoire. So each sound that we introduce um, is also demonstrated as part of um, poetry in the art songs or operas that, that we commonly um, encounter. Uh, so again, here you have all the bright eyes highlighted. Um, and these are also read slowly uh, so that you can really hear in context and, and what they sound like when they are in a sentence. And I have to say for me, that was one of the most fun things to look up. 
Um, and as we went through the book, we realized how many examples that I use all the time from Carmen. <laughs> so I had to go digging for some other examples sometimes. But it was also fun because as you're working through a repertoire and you see different things, you're like, oh, I have to remember that. This is a great example of this or all four nasal vowels together. Like that happens in, in at least five different places that I've seen. So to find phrases that we could use is that I was very proud of the a la fois charmant et malade, de fatal, all those ah vowels. I very rarely have seen that many ah vowels in a row. Right. So when I find things like that, that's what my little brain says. Oh, this is fun. Save this for an example for something. Beautiful. And we also made sure that all these examples uh, demonstrated all the possible spellings, or at least uh, as many of the possible spellings. We have the OI here that you know triggers that right ah, and here we have that. Uh, e M M that also triggers the ah, so so that all these are also put into context. Um, so in this first module, we would go through the the tongue vowels, uh, and they're all built uh, and organized the same way. And at the end of each module, we have uh, a little review section where we sort of mix things up in our word list. So these are good sort of world drills to do in class. Uh, have the students read them. Uh, without you know playing the recording first or uh, playing the recording first and then repeat or there's many ways of, um, of doing this um, and then we add uh, little activities uh, that can be done um, individually or in the classroom as uh, sort of uh, alone time uh, so if I click on one of these guys we have all these little widgets that pop up so this is one of the things that we created where you have to find the two cards that match. And then if you got it right, then it, it shows the right color. So it, it sort cool. of triggers, it, it sort of trains you to look for the symbol that goes with the spelling. Um, and in the early chapters, it's it's not too hard yet because you haven't learned that many symbols. So it's, it's you know, you can almost go by illumination here a little bit. Um, but as we go through, um, through the modules, it, it becomes more complicated. Uh -huh. um, we did a lot of this kind of thing too, um, drag and drop, uh, you know, where you have the two options here for the correct symbol, and then you, you pick the one that's the right one. If you get it right, uh, it's checked with a, a green arrow. Uh, I'm gonna show you what happens if I do it wrong. It just doesn't uh, acknowledge ah. it. So that's how you know. That's, uh, are you really sure that yes. that's what you meant? <laughs> Do you really want to proceed? No comment. <laughs> and um, the homework that we, uh, so the, the homework is built very, in a very similar fashion around the same kinds of exercises. They're just not in the book. So teachers would um, get in touch with us and we would send them the links to all these uh, widgets that they can then share with their classrooms uh, for homework. And then the students can submit that directly back to them. Uh, but they're, they're built in a very similar kind of way with drag and drops, uh, connect the dots, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing we have in the review section, we have uh, a lot of the Diction Police videos that we had done, the diction tips that we had done. So we tried to make sure that each chapter has at least one of something that went along with the topics in the chapter. Um, for this one, the plural articles in French and the AI diagraph and whether that's open or closed. And after that, if there was a tongue twister that went along with it, we put that in too. Uh, otherwise, we also put in the diction lessons, which are something we've done on the Facebook page for years. And so we give the suggested listening so they know which recordings we think are the best examples of, of different topics. And then we flesh out a topic a little bit more. Yeah, so a diction lesson is, is sort of a, a focus on one aspect of diction. So in this case, we're focusing on the uh, AI diagraph. Mm -hmm. And like Alan said, we try to find uh, examples that would uh, illustrate that point. And uh, I think the, the thing that, in, in terms of the feedback that we got, one of the, the things that was really appreciated is the, uh, the su listening suggestions so that teachers can um, really just take these, uh, look them up on YouTube and then share them with your students. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason we didn't link directly to the YouTube videos is that sometimes 
YouTube takes things down or they stop working. And so that, that always requires a lot of kind of fussing around and making sure the links work. So we figured it was just easy enough to, uh, to look these up. But um, these are all Diction Police approved and vetted uh, recordings. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other, when we moved, when we moved into consonants, we did go back and forth quite often on the consonants about how we wanted to break that down. And in the end, what we came up with was in the overview when we when we first talk about consonants, rather than going through the spellings already, we talked about the phonetic sounds that they can make. Mm -hmm. So we really just focused on the sounds of the consonants. And then in the later chapters, we go through the, the later modules, excuse me, um, we go through how these things are spelled then. So we go through the alphabet, you know, in alphabetical order and talk about the different spellings that way. Right. So if this module eight, uh, where I am now, uh, we just have the, the words without an explanation of the spellings. And this is just really to, um, acquire the sounds and uh, how to create the sounds. And then as Ellen said, uh, the next two modules really focus on spellings. Um, and it, it seemed like a, a good way to break it up uh, for French because the, the spelling rules are um, sometimes so complicated and uh, finicky that it, it can quickly become overwhelming when we're trying to just focus on sounds. So we, we we, f we felt it was a good idea to sort of uh, break it up that way. Definitely. Uh, so that was our concerns. Um, spent a lot of time on liaison. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> as, um, as anyone who's uh, sung French or taught French or <laughs> dealt with French knows, it's it's a big topic, um, and you know it's it's one of the things that uh, I think will remain uh, a question for the longest. Uh, when or when not to do the liaison, uh, it's 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 messy and complicated. So um, I, I'm gonna I need to bookmark this module right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we even we found out later too that because of the way because of the way language is now taught in in schools, we had to add in a little bit about the uh, about the parts of speech. Oh, if, sure. Yeah. If we're saying that it's you know the subject verb and direct object, but you're not sure what an object is. Uh -huh. Then we have to we had to go through and explain a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, you know, deciding when or when not to do a liaison sort of implies that you know a little bit of your grammar and, like Ellen says, your parts of speech. And and we realize, and I've realized over the years that sometimes if I say predicate in a class, it's it doesn't carry a lot of meaning. So, we have all these little reminders of good of good. what we're talking about um, and uh, you know what they are in French, what they are in English, and we compare compare the two, you know, mm -hmm. you these parts of speech, what, what's a noun, uh, what's a pronoun, um, because these are, these are really the, 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 the rules that you need to actually decide on, on right. uh, whether or not to do the liaison. Yeah. Um, and then we finished the whole thing with sort of uh, two broad, broader chapters. One is what we called gourmet style. Uh, and in this, we talk about a little bit more about word stress and the rhythm of the language. Um, so these are more sort of stylistic considerations of singing in French. Um, we talk about language register, um, you know, which will have an impact on, you know, whether you um, use the or not, or uh, whether it's acceptable sometimes to not roll an R, uh, things like that. Right. Uh, we talk about vocalic harmonization in here, which we prefer to sort of keep towards the end rather than uh, deal with it as we went along all the chapters. Um, mm -hmm. This is also a somewhat complicated topic, so it, it felt um, more logical to have it at the end once all the sounds were already um, presented. Uh, and I forget what else there is in there, that's it. That, that, in that chapter, the last, the, the last thing is special words, and that was a lot of fun <laughs> to say. So the special words, um, we, we picked some of the things that tend to, uh, hold on, I went up the wrong thing. Um, some of the words that come back very commonly, so numbers uh, that are dealt with in a very irregular way in French, uh, but then a lot of individual words, donc, soit, um, all these all these guys uh, that do happen a lot in, in poetry and that uh, don't necessarily always uh, follow the rules. Um, and then as sort of a 
overall resource, we have uh, the first appendix that lists uh, spellings with the sounds and the common rules that go with them. So this is sort of where you would go if, if you want a quick lookup of uh, a particular spelling that you're encountering and you're not sure anymore, you see AOU somewhere, what is it? Uh, you will find it here. Uh, and we, we include the, the main rules and the main exceptions uh, when appropriate. Mm -hmm. And then Alan spent a lot of time thinking of all the proper nouns. Oh, no. I seriously went through Opera Guide and looked up every French opera and looked up every French character in every French opera just to make sure that we would have everyone's name in here. Good, good for you. Yeah. I mean, and, it was a pandemic. What else was I going to do? And I think there's, we have uh, 997 or something. Oh. So we're, we're coming in a thousand. Yeah. That seemed fair. <laughs> Hundred percent, and um, and even that you can go to by letter. So if you're looking for Don Jose, you can look under D, and you'll get to Don Jose. Let me go to Don. Or right. I think I also put that under J as Jose. Probably, where is he? There he is. Yep, beautiful. How great! So that's in a nutshell our little. Um, you know, stroll through the handbook. Um, it took us a while to figure out what to call it also. <laughs> because it's not um, it's not just a textbook, it's also not only a course, it's sort of a combination of things. And because we have all the, you know, the, the homework and the, all the exercises and the interact, interactive elements in there, um, I thought handbook was sort of um, what we, felt was sort of a more encompassing of everything. Mm -hmm. Ellen, I'm not sure if I forgot anything that... Um... Um, I don't think so. I think out of the book that was everything. Oh, on the website, the one thing I wanted to say, one thing we have that a lot of the, the, the previous websites that did diction things didn't have is we have text readings. So when you have, when you're looking up your art song, we have the, the phonetic transcription and the translation, but we also have a text reading of it. So you can hear a native speaking person in the opera world reading the text to it as well. And this was um, one of the, uh, when Ellen was working in Germany, she had access to all these uh, native speaking coaches uh, uh, from various houses that she had work, worked in and, and knew. Uh, so we're, we're still have this team of uh, readers and coaches that, that can create all this content for us. Because uh, we, it's it's very important that uh, not only uh, we use native speakers, but they also have to be native speakers who uh, understand diction and know mm -hmm. how to uh, how to actually pronounce these from a singer's perspective. So they're either singers or coaches themselves. Right. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I think I can stop sharing. Ooh, there we are. <laughs> Great. So. Um, how do how do individuals access this? How do teachers responsible for a course access this? Individuals can purchase it at the website. So www.dictionpolice.com. Right on the front page, you'll see a thing about Chanty. Or at the top, as Francois showed, there are two places that say handbook. That'll show you where to purchase it. Right. Um, we do have a, a frequently asked questions, so you can check that out as well. Um, and if you're a teacher, then please write to us at info at dictionpolice.com because if you're thinking of using it for your classroom, we want to offer you a perusal copy so you can look through everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And I, I want to add also that um, it's not a hard copy. Uh, we've had people. Um, inquire about it and wondering where they would receive their copy in the mail. Uh, so this is entirely digital. Um, and the way it works is once you've purchased that you get uh, an access code and an invitation to download the uh, the actual desktop app. So that's that's how that goes. Sorry, folks, the way of the world. That's <laughs> right. That's it. We're, we're, we're pushing the needle forward. Um, and just to be super clear, it start, one could start this with zero knowledge of French lyric diction. So, right? Yes. So in an academic setting, presumably in the, the introduction for Absolutely. Does the Does the level of uh, difficulty 
traverse upward such that it would be appropriate for a graduate French fiction yeah, course student? Absolutely, absolutely. And also for professionals that have been out in the world. I mean, that's the one thing when I started the podcast too, that I had, I've had many different people from all walks of life say to me, this, I listened to that and I, you know, I was like, oh, well, this is kind of basic, but then you say something and I didn't realize that that was actually a rule. So we've, we've kept that in this. So it's not just that we say, this is the rule and this is the basics. Like we say, this is the rule. And if you want more specifics, click on this and we'll give you more information. That's fantastic. And it, you basically create this blanket um, that covers it at every corner. Yeah. And, and we try to make it so that it's um, it's both very thorough. So I think we really cover every possible rule and every possible spelling, but we, we're presenting them in a way um, that doesn't feel like it's overwhelming uh, immediately. So like Ellen said, if there are things that are more uh, fine points, it's they're presented as sort of a click here to know more about that kind of thing rather than in the main body so that people know where to access the the really important stuff and then if they want to go further they can they can also find that beautiful beautiful uh <laughs> at the risk of uh, i think you both are ready for a nap after getting this thing off the ground but we <laughs> already have a question if you're going to add more language handbooks oh yeah we're, we're working on the german one the, the difficulty with the german one is obviously when we go to the italian one we can call it canta but if we go to german then we write zing on the front and it looks like sing so we're we're still considering titles for it but we're, we are hard at work on the german one yes very much so <laughs> just call it zing and then you know on the first page of the handbook right <laughs> well the the suggestion was made to me to, to actually instead of writing the word as sing to write it in phonetics which That's is also very clever kind of cute yeah um it's so you, already, you already are at work on the german so you you have plans Yes. Yeah, the plan is for release before the fall. Oh, wow. So yeah. that uh, teachers can use it for their fall classes. Yeah. So that's the goal. The goal is to have the, the German one up by next year and hopefully the year after that, the Italian. We also do want to do an overview one there, because there are schools that do rather than do just one language at a time that we would do like an actual overview of diction for singers or so, uh, and, and short addiction kind of class. Fantastic. So everybody really needs to have their eye on this and 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 um, keep their eye on it for all its machinations and all the different possibilities that you all are going to come out with. Indeed. Great. Anything else that that is important for people to know before they go and um, research it more themselves and 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 make a decision? Diction is fun. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Francois, Ellen, if people have been with us for all 46 minutes of this live stream so far and have not turned away from the live stream, they know addiction is free. <laughs> <laughs> right? but well, Ellen and, I, Ellen and I often joke that we're uh, two big geeks and uh, we, we get excited about strange things sometimes, but... Uh... <laughs> like me with my a la fois charmant et fatal. <laughs> all these bright eyes, yeah. <laughs> No, this is this is very great, and and obviously people are reacting very well, as you can see. And this is the perfect, you know, what what can what can sort of be conceived of or perceived as you know a relatively dry topic. First of all, it's amazing to have two people as passionate about the topic as you, you know, creating these resources because that trickles down to every level of your product, um, and. It's fantastic. And the other thing that I, you know, mentioned before is of like this is of course 400 times better um, when it's uh, built interactively, of course. So just just a beautiful presentation and like you said Francois vessel for presenting this content and this information. Much better than just some 2D sort of like droning on and yeah, the interaction aspect is great. Yeah. And if, if there are any questions, just uh, info at dictionpolice.com. We'll be happy to uh, answer anything. And um, one thing maybe we could mention about the website, too, is that if, if you're working on a, a particular song cycle or some repertoire that we don't have on the website or that's more obscure, just send us an email there as well, and we'll, we'll be happy to uh, create materials for that. Uh, as long as things are in public domain, we can, uh, 
we can uh, do on-demand kind of content. Exactly. And if your university, if you have a university that's looking for a resource like this, we do have university subscriptions to the website part of it. The handbook is something separate from the subscription, but for all of the all of the contents, the the diction lessons and the the uh, uh, IP tra transcriptions and translations, readings. And text readings, all of that is on the subscription side. Or if you're a private person, we do have sub sub uh, subscriptions for private people as well for forty dollars a year. Beautiful, easy. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you both, Ellen and Francois. And um, it, for anybody who hasn't picked up on Ellen double fisting uh, her mugs today, she's supporting <laughs> both. Francois is uh, remaining loyal to CSI. As a first, as a first time guest on your on your show, I, thank I you. thought Ellen, I Ellen, Ellen's like I've been on a CSI live stream more times than I can count this season. I'm over it. Well, the last time I was on, and I completely forgot to mention the Diction Police. I'm like, I'm working at Carnegie Mellon, and I'm working with Temple University for their upper workshop, and and literally completely didn't say, I'm also a co-founder of the Diction Police. <laughs> like, yes. So, h hence the hence the, the seed was born to bring you both on and do a full hour revealing the Diction Police, and we love to highlight all of our friends and. Uh, colleagues and all their incredible projects. So, so glad that we did this. Everybody, please go check out the website and learn more about Shanté, the new handbook, as well as the Diction Police at large and share it with all your friends. Um, thank you both for coming on to the live stream and sharing your Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and um, have a beautiful Saturday. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>